Top of the morning, Dan and Amy. Building off of our conversation with Professor John McWhorter last hour about uh, language, uh, we're developing that a little bit with our next guest in terms of framing. One thing, what words mean and the idea of corrupting the language versus um, uh, coming up with new concepts for things as we were distinguishing with McWhorter a bit. But the issue of framing, how you frame a particular challenge or an issue can be determinative in how it's resolved or if it's resolved. And that's the subject of uh, a new book called Framers, Human Advantage in an Age of Technology and Turmoil, which uh, releases today. So you want to pick that up. One of the authors is Victor Mayer Schoenberger, Professor of Internet Governance and Regulation at the Oxford Internet Institute at the University of Oxford. He's also faculty affiliate of the Belfer Center of Science and International Affairs at Harvard University. Pr uh, I guess a professor, yeah, Professor Schoenberger. Thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, please do call me Victor. Oh, okay, great. Thank you, uh, Victor. Well, very, very informal. You like that? Like don't get hung up on titles. Uh, all right. So. Um, just sort of as, as the baseline here, the importance of framing and problem solving and, and what led you into and you and your co-authors into this uh, into this book. Well, you know, we, we all face decisions every day, some inconsequential ones and some really hard and consequential ones. And uh, most of us think that good decision making is about Make, picking the right of the two options that we have or the three options that we have. Uh, and, and there is so much literature and there is so much research done on, on how good or bad humans are in, in, in picking one of those options. But as we looked into this topic of decision making, we realized it isn't about picking one of the two options. It's coming up with better options. Uh, it, it is coming up with uh, better options than the conventional options that we always have on the table because that will enable us to make better decisions and that is something that we humans are really really good at if we try so this deliberate framing you're talking about uh, give us an example i in um i read uh, something where you reference how you got your mom's doctors to sort of reassess this uh medical condition she had because um, they they were they weren't thinking about it right, and you got them yep. to do some deliberate framing, and and it it uh, produced a better outcome for your mom. It, give us that example. Absolutely, uh, my my mom um, was in her late eighties, and she she um, developed the condition, got to the hospital, and they discovered there that she also had a very high blood pressure. We had loaned that for a long time, so they. They gave her medication and pushed the blood pressure all the way down, and she became apathic. Uh, she she lethargic um, uh, because of that low blood pressure. And and I said to the doctors, look, you know, she's gonna, she, she's not leaving the bed. She's not gonna get any better. Why don't we uh, reduce that medication? Let her have that high blood pressure. I take the risk that she might die uh, due to a stroke, but she will have life quality. Uh, she all her life had high blood pressure. That's how her body operates. Let's leave that body at, at, at that temperature, so to speak, at, at, at that level. And they did. Fortunately, I was able to persuade them. Uh, and my mother got better very quickly. We got her out of hospital. She had three additional years of great life quality at home. She eventually died of a stroke at the age of 91, but but she had a long life, and I, I thought that this was absolutely the right decision, reframing what was at hand an issue. That's pretty powerful stuff. Uh, yeah, and so, and also, too, you know, this, this framing, though, it, it is not unmoored, or it shouldn't be unmoored. And you also, uh, in, in the book you co-authored, uh, talk about how you need to constrain your imagination to make frames effective, and you use the uh, the the uh, Israeli commando raid in Entebbe as an example of constraining imagination to make the framing effective. Indeed, when when the the Israelis needed to free the hostages from Entebbe, um, they 
they faced uh, huge challenges. So they asked themselves, what if we do this? What if we do that? They construed in their minds um, alternative realities, wh 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 how they are going to free the hostages. And then uh, they said um, some of those ideas just don't work. And to find out what works and what doesn't, they actually build a replica of the Entebbe airport where the hostages were held in Israel um, and, and then played the various scenarios out there at that replica in order to see what kind of option works best. Uh, our mind is not particularly good when it goes all the way out in this sort of in a freewheeling kind of state. Our mind excels when it is constrained, when it is disciplined in its thinking. That's what the Israelis did, and that's what, quite frankly, Ronald Reagan did as well. 1987, when he uh, he said to Gorbachev, "Tear down that wall." He wasn't he wasn't looking for Star Wars to intervene. He suggested a very actionable, uh, um, a, a very actionable intervention that actually then happened. Uh, it is constraints that make our dreams actionable. So, what about? Yeah, uh, I mean, it's just an, it seems to me an important point, and it's a, a way of framing it. You know, uh, constraint and creativity are, are complements, not antonyms. Indeed, and. Uh, and we are quite creative, but we are most creative when we are when we have limits and when we are adhering to the limits. The great architect Frank Gehry said uh, that he is constrained 85% of the time by the laws of gravity, but it's the 15% of freedom that he has that that he is able to come up with great designs. And that's true with, with in business, that's true in sports, uh, and that's true in all of our individual lives as well. What about the power of reframing COVID and the COVID response? Um, absolutely. We, we see that uh, in so many different ways. Um, you know, uh, in New Zealand and Britain, two islands had two different approaches to to COVID. Uh, one in New Zealand, they said that this is really like SARS, um, a dangerous pandemic, and they shut down the country very quickly, uh, eliminated the virus, and within weeks were back online um, and were COVID-free for many months. While in Britain, uh, the government looked at it and said, well, maybe that's more like the flu, um, and so we need to mitigate it. Uh, and that didn't work very well in the first wave, although later on last year, thanks to a massive vaccination uh, attempt and, uh, and, 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 and relatively clear uh, government policies, uh, the UK did much better than, for example, continental Europe. Uh, and so depending on how you frame the pandemic, uh, uh, whether it's the flu or whether it's a serious disease, um, you come up with different solutions in different contexts at different times. Yeah, and, and, and then framing, though, can run up against uh, the repetition, you know, repetition from those with uh, the biggest blowtorch. And so, for example, uh, you know, a catch-all explanations uh, of COVID response policy following the science and data, following the science and data, following the science and data, abundance of caution, abundance of caution, abundance of caution, when in point of fact, uh, some of those responses, as we've seen most recently, even, for example, summer camp guidance uh, from the CDC, are neither following the data to, uh, in science nor uh, re reflect a reasonable abundance of caution. And so, you know, it, 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 it seems to me that the propagandizing, and I'm using that as an example, you may agree or disagree, um, can uh, really pollute uh, framing of a particular issue. You know, we make a, a very important point, I think, in the book, uh, and, and I want to emphasize it very strongly. Uh, there is no bad frame. There is only bad framing. Um, and so, uh, you know, when we look at it, and there's the frame of science, or the, the frame of uh, uh, epidemiology, and then there's the frame of liberty. Um, and what we the argument we make in the book is that one isn't necessarily better than the other. It depends on the circumstances. It depends on the context. And it would be just terribly wrong 
to drown out and to scream out people who have another frame, who have another perspective looking at things, because we need the the, the variety of these perspectives uh, in order to come up with the best, uh, best solutions. Uh, otherwise, we, we end up with suboptimal solutions, and, and that can be pretty dangerous for society. Amen to that. He is uh, Professor Victor Mayer Schoenberger, Professor of Internet Governance and Regulation at the Oxford Internet Institute at the University of Oxford, also the faculty affiliate of the Belfer Center of Science and International Affairs at Harvard. The book, again, pick it up, Framers, Human Advantage in an Age of Technology and Turmoil, which is out today. Professor Schoenberger, thanks so much for joining us, and good luck with the book. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you, and he joined us on our turnkey dot pro answer line listen to podcasts of dan and amy from the am 560 mobile app download it today at 560 the slash mobile if you purchase your own health insurance i have some great news from now until august 15th the health insurance exchanges are open again and even if you've never qualified for a health insurance subsidy before you most likely will now the american rescue plan signed on march 11th expanded subsidy eligibility to millions of americans who have never qualified before even to those with high income levels, and especially those between the ages of 50 and 65. Those who qualify for unemployment benefits are now guaranteed the lowest priced plan. Employers who provide small group coverage also have new options, and so do seniors looking for Medicare supplement coverage. Call me. I can help. If you're tired of calling a bureaucrat in an 800 number to help you navigate Obamacare, then you need a local expert on your side. Your own health insurance mentor. See Stephen Tucker from healthinsurancementors.com as someone I know and trust. He's a 25-year licensed broker who's been educating our listeners for 10 years. Tell them how they can get in touch with you, Steve. Thanks, Dan. They can visit healthinsurancementors.com or call me directly at 630-674-1551. All right, he did it again. Mike Lindell, the founder and creator of MyPillow, has now made the perfect slipper. They're called My Slippers, and they have three layers inside those bad boys, two layers of the MyPillow foam, and then gel which gives you comfort your feet want to wear these trust me you can wear them indoors and outdoors and the exterior is a leather suede so they're very solid and right now mike lindell is offering them for 40 percent off they make great gifts you're going to bring smiles to a lot of people's faces with that or treat yourself to a pair of my slippers simply go to mypillow.com and type amy in the promo code 40 percent off the my slippers plus discounts on all their products the MyPillow mattress topper, the Giza Dream Sheets. There's blankets and towels, weighted blankets. Find it all at MyPillow.com and be sure to use promo code Amy. Balance of nature is fruits and vegetables in a capsule. Changing the world one life at a time. My main focus was I want to be healthy. I don't want to be sick. I don't want to get a cold. I don't want to get the flu. I was just trying to make sure that I can get up each day and not go, oh my gosh, I feel like crap. I don't even want to get out of bed. I wanted to like, all right, let's go. And uh, I feel like I've accomplished that. I got the energy that I need and uh, I don't get sick and it's, uh, it's good. So I'm attributing that to uh, the balance of nature. And it's, uh, it's like, wow, man, this is, this is great. Get a wide variety of all your daily recommended servings of whole fruits and vegetables without having to leave your home. Right now, Balance of Nature is offering free shipping and 35% off on any new preferred order. Call 1-800-2468-751 or go to balanceofnature.com and make sure to receive this special radio offer by using discount code CHICAGO. All right, it's that time for our annual AM560 golf outing. As you know, it'll be taking place Monday, June 28th at the Misswood Golf Club in Romeoville. Dan, I think my foursome is going to beat your foursome this year. Last year, I, I do that. believe you cheated. I doubt that. Well, what, what, what were you guys, what, 17 under? I don't remember. Uh, I remember because I thought it was a lie. You were lying, Trump. <laughs> Just, we were 10 under, but it was an honest 10 under. I don't cheat. Oh, okay. All right, well. Anyway, it's a scramble, and it's taking place Monday, June 28th. The proceeds go to the 100 Club of Illinois. Folks, it's your chance to back the blue. And here's the best part. When you pay $1,196, that's $300 a piece, for the golf outing, you'll get breakfast and lunch or breakfast or dinner. If you have a morning tea time, obviously, or an afternoon tea time, you'll get to hang out with us. But also, if you own a business, we'll give you the AM560 marketing package that includes 25 one-minute commercials that will air here Monday through Friday, plus a free digital marketing analysis. 
Go to 560theanswer.com slash golf. That's 560theanswer.com slash golf. Sponsored in part by Joe Cotton Ford, Remke's Garage, Mars Medical, Pops Italian Beef and Sausage, and State Farm Insurance Agent Finney Rachel.